What's up everyone, Alex here. Adaptations of stories from various media to video games have been around for quite a long time. These kinds of games allow for a kind of power fantasy that no other media delivers, letting us experience a franchise's popular stories from a different perspective, while providing an opportunity to craft new tales as a result. However, there's also a certain expectation that anime adaptations cater heavily towards existing fans, with little consideration to newcomers potentially interested in what the game, and by proxy, its source material, is all about. Fairy Tale is one such game, and upon closer inspection of the manga and anime, its adaptation to a full-fledged RPG is one that's been a long time coming. As someone who considers themselves a casual fairy tale fan, only watching so far as the 23rd episode of the anime, I wanted to see if I could still enjoy the game without the additional context behind the stories featured within. In other words, what does fairy tale have to offer RPG fans, regardless of their relationship, or lack thereof, with the series? Fairy Tale is a fantasy-themed turn-based RPG whose story and characters are based on the popular anime and manga. The game is developed by Gust, the creators of the Atelier series, and published by Koi Tecmo, whose European division provided the code for this review. Fairy Tale also happens to be the name of the guild whose members you'll meet and play as throughout your adventure. The guild has seen better days and after our heroes return from a long and arduous journey, they discover that their guild hall is now a shadow of its former self, with the local townsfolk barely acknowledging their existence. It's up to you to help Fairy Tale in reclaiming their former glory, while uncovering the mysteries of what happened while the guild was absent. The game's story is based on three arcs from the middle of the series' run, the Tenru Island arc, the Grand Magic Games, and Tartaros. Perhaps the biggest, most important question that needs to be answered immediately is whether or not you can play Fairy Tale without knowing anything about the story and characters of the original anime and manga. As much as I would love to unequivocally say that you can, the way that the game presents its story could potentially confuse existing fans of the series and newcomers alike. Fairy Tale's story consists of select portions from each of the three mentioned story arcs to try and weave a cohesive, standalone tale. Existing fans can fill in the gaps with the knowledge of what actually happens in the original stories. However, the game's narrative doesn't allow much time for players to absorb some of its more pivotal events to help their impact sink in, as you're often whisked from one plot point to the next quickly in order to advance the main story. This also doesn't leave time for much-needed character development, which is important to ensure that players care about the motivations of each of the story's characters. Needless to say, this is a game that you probably don't want to play if you're looking for an engaging and well-told story, unless, of course, you're a huge fan of the series or have intimate knowledge of what's about to unfold. So why on Earthland would you even consider playing this game? The biggest reason for me is that Fairy Tale truly lends itself to a fun RPG experience. Early on in the anime and manga, guild members take on various requests from a request board to try and rank up their status within the guild. You'll also be taking on requests from said board in this game, only this time you're doing so to help raise the notoriety of the guild amongst the other competing guilds in the kingdom. Completing requests will also reward you with fairy points that you can spend to rank up each individual party member, which unlocks character-specific abilities as well as some alternate costumes. These ranks have caps, whose limits are raised by way of character story events, which become available the more you play with a specific set of characters during battles. These events give a glimpse into each character's personalities, and while a few of them do a good job of giving the players some interesting background, most of them leave something to be desired. Unfortunately, to keep within the lore, you can only take one request at a time, which can be quite frustrating given that so many requests target the same monsters over and over again. This is almost inexcusable in modern game design, where the player's time must be respected. Despite that, I found solace in doing these requests because it helped break down the rapid-fire nature of the main story's delivery, and I was able to help the guild rise up to rank A within a mere 13 hours of playing the game. 
Each tier of the guild's rank has its own unique set of goals, which are a checklist of things to do that unlocks a variety of helpful rewards. These can be fulfilled at your own leisure, and just because you reach the next guild rank doesn't mean that previous goals are no longer available to complete. These goals and their rewards provide a worthwhile excuse to play around with some of Fairy Tales gameplay systems, and given the developer's pedigree, there's a lot that you'll want to check out. Your guild hall houses many of these systems, and is essentially your one-stop shop for everything you need. You have an item shop where you can buy potions to aid you in battle, a laboratory where you can craft Lacrima, which is the game's version of an RPG armor slash accessory system, and of course, the guild's request board. Shortly after these facilities are unlocked, you'll be able to upgrade and enhance each of them. Outside of their stated uses, enhancing each facility will grant your party some permanent passive abilities, such as increasing your entire party's maximum HP by a percentage, or boosting your jewel earnings, the game's currency, after the successful completion of a request. Throughout your journey, you'll come across various materials that you can use to improve these facilities, craft lacrima, or turn in for various community service quests that'll reward you with an item, lacrima, or jewels. These are no frills fetch quests and don't have any story tied to them at all, but the rewards you earn from them can really help you get your bearings early on. The beauty of all these interlocking systems is that while they seem a bit complicated at first glance, they begin to feed into each other in a manner that makes it feel less like busy work and more like you're making meaningful progress towards the success of your guild. Its design is a testament to Gust's mastery of creating gameplay systems that are not only fun and engaging, but also cleverly tied to the main premise of their games. That being said, one of the biggest draws of Fairy Tale is its extravagant and bombastic magical battles. The battles in Fairy Tale all happen on a 3x3 grid, with enemies scattered about. Because of the series' heavy reliance on magic, you'll naturally find yourself utilizing these more than any other basic command in the game. The cost of an attack magic spell is based on how many enemies and portions of the grid can be targeted. Each attack spell comes with one or more different elemental affinities, and some can also manipulate the position of the enemies on the grid or inflict status effects. This might all sound like standard RPG fare, and for what it's worth, some of the things I just mentioned are also why people have said that this battle system reminded them of Radiant Historia, but that's where the similarities end. I mentioned earlier that part of the reason why many play video game adaptations is to experience a power fantasy, and it's because of this that many of the spells featured in Fairy Tale have visual effects and behavior that accentuate the strength of its playable characters. This idea is further supported by the ease in which players can fast travel back to a nearby town, replenish all their spent HP and MP, and fast travel back to the location they were exploring. While it's tempting to say that this is inherently a design flaw, I see this as a means to engage in Fairy Tales world in a different way than I do with most other RPGs. This power fantasy is further extended beyond just casting attack spells in the game, and as your guild continues to grow, you'll keep unlocking new features that'll make your already mighty party even stronger. Perhaps my favorite out of all these battle system features is that each character has an awakening meter, which builds up every time they take damage. This meter is used in a variety of different ways, and the options it opens up for you are massive. For starters, filling up the awakening meter and turning it on will not only partially restore the character's HP and MP, but will also raise their stats and unlock exclusive attacks only available in this mode. Furthermore, certain characters can boost their stats even further by selecting a different mode altogether. You can also turn on Awakening before getting hit during an enemy's turn and negate any incoming damage, but this comes at the cost of shortening the duration of Awakening. Finally, my absolute favorite use of the meter is the ability to utilize a quarter of a party member's Awakening so that they can deliver a powerful follow-up attack that triggers immediately after the current attacker's turn. These follow-up attacks are so overpowered that they not only hit the same enemies that were targeted by the previous attacker, they also treat those enemies as though they're weak to the incoming attack spell's elements, in addition to guaranteeing critical hits. 
This is all done without spending a single drop of MP. Best of all, these follow-up attacks count towards filling up a magic chain combo meter, which will allow you to cast attack spells in rapid succession. By the way, all of these facts were conveniently omitted from the tutorial text entirely. All of these battle system features, and many more that I'll leave for you to discover and be surprised by, truly make you feel that you're in control of a strong cast of characters, and you might even find yourself experimenting with your party makeup just to see how you can tweak your grid coverage and increase your cumulative damage. And while all of this ultimately makes Fairy Tale an easy game to play through, I actually feel that it's one of its biggest strengths. There is a hard difficulty available for players who want a more difficult experience, but I truly enjoyed how powerful I felt while playing through Fairy Tale on Normal, and there were barely any moments where I doubted the strength of my party. This feeling was complemented by the fact that Fairy Tale delivers a snappy, responsive battle system thanks to the now standard command button input system that's present in modern JRPGs. You also have the option to completely turn off battle animations to speed up battles even more, though frankly, I would have been just as happy to have the option to skip some of the longer spell animations in the game. I don't normally get this granular when it comes to talking about a game's systems, but I wanted to illustrate that while the game's story and character development are clearly not fairy tale strengths, you'll find much to enjoy elsewhere in the game. That said, Something funny happened to me the more I kept playing the game. The fun I had in combat and learning about the game's various systems actually started getting me invested in the guild's success. It's through this perspective that I slowly began to appreciate the individual contributions of each guild member. And just like that, I stopped caring about whether or not I knew an entire character's backstory. Suddenly, it was enough that we were all just striving towards a unified goal. From there, my involvement with some of the characters' journeys grew slowly. I began to empathize with Juvia's repeated attempts at wooing Grey to her bedchamber, for example, while, at the same time, I smiled every time Grey lost an article of clothing, as though I'd been familiar with these backstories for years. It was merely through the nature of playing the game and taking in the small yet constant drip feed of information for each character that I began to understand the interpersonal dynamics between some of them. And while this might sound ridiculous, I actually began to realize that I preferred the game's way of handling the characters more than what little I experienced from the anime. The succinct yet rapid-fire nature of the main story's delivery, for all its flaws, somehow worked itself out in the strangest of ways, not by its content, but through the gameplay that complemented it. All told, I have a small laundry list of quality of life features that I would have loved to have seen implemented in the game, and at the top is the option to hear English voice acting. There have been smaller publishers than Koi Tecmo who have made concerted efforts in delivering English dubs for their own JRPGs, and at this point in the history of the genre, I don't think it's unreasonable to declare this as an expected feature. It would also have been a better experience if the subtitles over the beginning pre-rendered movies have been timed to the character's speech better, as this gives a bad impression. I was also expecting a larger cast of playable characters than what eventually turned out. While making this review, I got notified that some of these characters will be available as paid DLC, which was disappointing to find out. It's always very difficult to review a game adaptation from a long-running series such as Fairy Tale, and frankly, I went into it expecting that I wouldn't know anything about what's going on and that I'd get lost. And while that did happen, no thanks in part to the speed in which I was whisked through its story, I found a nice balance thanks to the game's plentiful gameplay systems. And after engaging with it for several hours, I suddenly felt invested in getting Fairy Tale to the top rank right away, spending a ton of time doing requests early on while getting familiar with the many magical abilities that I'd be using to fight the game's rogues gallery of enemies. It's through the strength of its gameplay that Fairy Tale shines brightest for me, and I was doubly surprised to learn that I began to care for everyone involved towards the end of my 30 plus hour journey. Many have said that RPGs live or die by the strength of their stories, but Fairy Tale is proof that with solid gameplay and clever design that you can imbue emotion by way of gameplay. And who knows, 
You might just be as surprised as I was if you give the game a try.